Hello, Gilmaid. Hello. Oh, I think my uh, my screen isn't showing. Why is it, <coughs> why is it not showing? Oh, there it is. There we go. Hello. Do you like my new layout? Hello. I sorry. I was spending time putting this together. You know. Yes. 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 Hi, Gilmaid. Hi, Gilmaid. Let's do our intro real fast, Yuki. Do we have to? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Go for it. Hello, adventurers. My name is Yugi Estrella. And I'm Yuna Estrella of... Duo. Leveling. We are twin adventurer guildmasters here at the Atlas Adventure Guild. We are, and we are excited to adventure with you. Yay! It's a bit small. What is? Maybe you can extend it about... Or extend it a tad? Hmm, you mean the, uh, the, the, the screens? Yeah. Let me see, let me see what I can do. You're running the overlay, guys! Hold on. Hmm, let's get rid of the star here. Hold on, hold on. I got this. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can make the font extra big. Yeah, I'll, you know what? I'll zoom in on the page here. There we go. Hello, hello. Okay, now let me adjust the labels really quick. You can actually see who is doing what. Okay, Guildmates, hello, welcome! Today we are brainstorming for our TCG, our trading card game. Um, as you know, or some of you may know, that this is a passion project for both Yuki and I. Um, uh, even before we debuted, we had thought about doing a trading card game, and we had given out to our milestone followers, like 1,000, 2,000, uh, something like that, uh, Milestone followers on Twitter, custom trading cards. Um, can, we show, can we show a picture? Let me see oh, if I can link see. it. Wait, 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 <clears throat> I got it. I got it. Hold on, hold on. I can open the picture. And we had uh, even like, you no, know, uh, obviously what we have now is not the final product. It was a prototype. And it's definitely going to change. <laughs> so this is it was from a game that we had designed a um, long time ago in land far, away, far, far away. Um, and uh, we want to polish it more and make it more something that you guys could play with us. Um, so yeah, uh, we had even printed out hollow TCG cards, we've got our own custom sleeves, um, fake booster, <laughs> booster pack image, even, uh, made by Yuki. Yuki is amazing. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's something that we would like to do in the future. So today we are going to be brainstorming our, our TCG now. We're going to work on it in earnest on the side. <laughs> so, um, we're hoping that with the community's input and other things that we'll be able to make something that everyone will enjoy. Of course, it's probably not going to be super innovative or super amazing like, you know, Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! But I hope it's something that we all can play together uh, and have a fun time with it. Oh, let's say hello to a few people uh, while we start here. Also, hello Tyler, hi, hello Anne Sigma, hi, hello Noriboshi, 
Hi, Corey. Uh, hi, Hermit. Hi, Ancient Ark. Uh, hi, Mino. Hi, Acab. Hi, Ghost of a Dinosaur. Uh, hi, K. Hi, Crook Gaming. Gamer, sorry. Uh, hi, Como Mido. Hello. Hello, hello. So, yeah. Hello, welcome, welcome. Okay, so uh, today, you now will be taking notes. I will be taking notes, and Yuki will be doing, like, uh, images and stuff. So she'll, if, if we're talking about something, maybe she'll doodle a concept for us real fast. It'll be with the mouse, so it's not going to be very good. Yeah, with a mouse today. Okay? Um. So what we'll do is... Hello, Josh. Hello, Yuyan. Hello, hello. So, um... So what we'll do is we kind of already have a, a concept and um, what I'll do is I'll kind of present it with Yuki and then uh, you guys can give feedback input um, onto things and help us help us define this game here. Okay, Yuki, since this is kind of like your baby. This um, is my baby? I feel awkward. And your baby! My baby. <laughs> okay. I want so. to, uh, I'm too young to be a mom. It is your baby. Um, let me open up this Yuki custom card game. Okay. So, I'm going to read off my little task list here. Is that we're going to be making a collectible TCG. And it's going to be a one, initially, initially, right? A one versus one uh, dueling card game, right? So... We're just going to be doing no movement in the field, you know, moving your game pieces around, just facing off against each other. We're thinking about having no lands um, or energy cards in the main deck, and there'll be a side, a side deck, your crystal energy cards, right? Because in our world, mana crystals are very important, right? They amplify your abilities. Uh, and we're going to be having a system where your main hero or unit uh, will be facing off against another hero or unit. So you choose one unit to be your vanguard, so to speak, or, or your leader. And there's going to be a unit slash vanguard hero promotion system. So let's say if you level up your hero to level three. You can summon level 3 units on the field now. And then we we're thinking about doing an inherent skill system uh, where as you promote your units in Hero, you have additional bonuses. Um, we're going to be doing elements instead of factions because I think that's a little bit easier, right? So, Yuna, you know, for example, would be fire. Right? And I, I would be light. And for deciding who wins or loses, uh, we're thinking about going with a point system where you have to take away shields off a mana, a giant mana, mana crystal, right? And then um, your final hit to it determines if you lose. Yeah, so the, the crystal system would kind of be like Force of Will. I haven't really played Force of Will, I just kind of know it has a crystal system. Uh, um, I, what we what we thought about was like Digimon, right? What EX Digimon system, for, right? For uh, for what the skill system? For the for the skill system and for the win loss. Yeah, so it's kind of like the prize cards in Pokemon. You know, you you knock out six six things and your you lose. <laughs> so it's more like Hearthstone. Uh, so Hearthstone has uh, no elements on their crystals. Um, actually, no. Here, they're not metal crystals, host. Aren't they just elements? What? Elemental power. On the on the energy land decks, are they crystals or elements? I thought they were gonna be crystals. Okay, they're metal crystals. crystals. Elemental metal crystals, right? Yes. Okay. So I guess there are two crystals. When mm, so, okay. you want to call the big one the big mana crystals? 
What do you want to call the big man, Crystal? Skill base, give us suggestions. <laughs> when you knock the shields off of your blank. Mana core. Mana core, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, Hearthstone has mana crystals that increase one per turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elemental crystals. What can you call them? Elemental crystals. Or you can call them elemental shards. Elemental shards? Oh, Hermit yeah. suggested a warding crystal. A warding core. Warding crystal. Mana core or warding crystal. Or big or big man. I need to I need to I don't think big mana crystal's gonna work. Big mana crystal! The chonker mana crystal. <laughs> you like shards. Okay, we can do elemental shards. Mm hmm For the small deck. For the small deck. Yeah, yeah. And Sigma suggested that. Nice guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Um, for the big one, either, I was thinking either Mana Core, Warding Shard, Warding Crystal, or just a big Mother Crystal, Mother <laughs> Crystal. Mommy Crystal. Daddy Crystal. Or like, uh, Great Crystal. Right? Hmm. I'm sorry, Ancient Arc. You know I had to go there. Crystal. Great crystal. Who's up? Oh, I forgot to include Mother Crystal on there. Crap, crap, crap. It's not too late. Let me let me redo the poll. Let me redo the oh poll. My God. Gosh. Morning crystal. Great crystal. What was the other one? And a core. Mother crystal. There we go. Sorry, go ahead and vote again, guys. <laughs> so, again, we were kind of thinking that you would have a max of three copies per card. Non-hero. Mm. And then deck size and hand size based upon your leader card. Or your hero card, rather. Did you put that the vanguard slash hero must be the same level to summon that level unit? Okay. Okay. Hmm. Um, some other things that we brainstormed. Is... Well, how do you level up your hero? How do you promote your hero? Sacrificing unit cards? 
I feel bad if we do that. Yeah, like like Yugi just cannibalizes all her all her units. I think maybe the more damage that you take, the you know as your shields go down, right? It unlocks like oh, you can now promote your hero to level blah blah blah, kind of like a uh, white Schwartz, right? So it gives you a catch up mechanic that way. Because, you know, as the battle wears on, you're going to get stronger and stronger. Um, but I kind of wanted like a catch up mechanic for those of you who are like not. Uh, maybe you can do what Vanguard does and promote. Based on grade. Great. How's that work again? Hey, can you refresh us on how Vanguard promotion works? Yeah. We I've actually never played Vanguard. So I know Fire Emblem Hero uh Fire Emblem Sight you had a car, you could just place it on top. But you had to pay a cost in order to promote it. You can ride a unit once per turn. So there could be level up condition on heroes. There could be an increasing cost for each level up as an alternative. I am kind of leaning. Okay, so I guess something that we need to think about is what catch up mechanic do we want? Because I don't want it to be the case where you just snowball the hell to win. Because why Schwartz had the mechanic where uh the more damage you take, the more you level up. <laughs> Which I thought was really cool. Like the closer you get to defeat, you suddenly get to like summon level three units. And then I think Digimon had their mana system be their catch up mechanic. Oh really? Yeah, so like you share one mana pool, I guess. And the more that you spend mana, the more the other person gets mana too. Bear in mind, you would need to play test to really kind of understand what works and what doesn't. That's true. So I guess, Yuki, what, what would you prefer? Also, Warding Crystal is the winner. Okay. The so we'll do Warding Crystal. Which makes sense. You're trying to ward off other other uh, armies, Wash, right? Uh, ancient Arc, yeah. Ancient Arc says the White Schwartz one sounds like one side. The one doing damage doesn't level up. No. It would give the other side a chance to catch up because they would be able to, you know, bring other powerful units faster. But... Hmm. I can kind of see your point. Guildmates, what other systems do you think we should do? We cross turns damage into resources, creating a pendulum effect where the harder the enemy swings, the more momentum you had to swing back. That's what I kind of want to do. So maybe, maybe we should do. Ah, okay. Um, how about? Aeon said I actually like the Digimon memory idea to simulate a back and forth battle. Oh, that's true. Um, uh, there is. We can probably do something like Wick Cross too, where if you take a shield damage, right, you draw a card from your mana crystal or your your shard deck. So you have one extra energy. Would that work? At all times. At all times. Mm-hmm. That, that could be an option. So why don't I put, like, a question mark? So, so catch up mechanics, uh, damage to crystal, warding crystal, opponent, your victim. person receiving damage. Victim. Victim. Victim receives Vic extra uh, draws charge. Draws a shard. Draws a shard. Yeah. That would be cool because then the universe would be like the crystal itself is fighting back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you draw a shard, but not a monster, right? No, no, no. So 
there's a shard. And it's like I, you pick up it's like you pick up pieces of the crystal and you just <laughs> lob it back at them. <laughs> yeah. So basically, um what's gonna happen, I think, is you know how they have like cards as counters as your count like tokens for your uh your shield, right? So I'm thinking that maybe like you take whatever number is gonna be your shields from the shard deck and you place them face down to indicate how many you know counter hits or whatever thing is in you thing bobby. You know what I mean, right? Mm-hmm. And then, so you just take it at your turn. And then, I was also thinking that some mana shards can be special where they have a power that's activatable if you have it as your warning crystal. So let's say if you take damage and then you draw the, the shard, right? And it has like a little symbol at the top. And it like gives you an extra bonus because it's somehow made its way into your uh, warding crystal area. Again, welcome. You're not late. So what do you think of that, Yuna? So hmm. I do like so Hermit. The bonus. I think the bonus can't be too much for those. This is already very luck based. <laughs> And you can only have a limit of how many of those special warning cards, uh, crystal shards that you get, right? Hmm. We had to decide the limit for the shard deck, that's for sure. Hi, Brian! How are you but doing? I, I, I welcome, do, welcome. I, I do kind of like it, because it gives you, like, a little, a little buff. Besides getting, uh, you know, some extra mana. Yeah, security trigger, shield trigger kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like that. So can you put that down, please? Okay. Um, some... Okay, so wait. Uh, do a shield so... trigger effect on shards drawn from mana or from the, from the warning crystal. Are all, all, all uh, crystals going to have that effect or just a few? Okay, so, no. Okay. Only a few certain types of cards, right? Certain types of crystals, right? And we would have to... Uh, figure out which goes to what. Uh, they can have different effects. Um, like fire, if you have it in your... Uh, warning deck. It can give you plus 100 power on your next turn or whatever. Or like plus 100 shield on your defending power. So it gives you a little bit more advantage. In the next turn, too. Ben Bills, hello! You got what I'm saying? Miles David, hello! No, it, it, or it heals your unit if it's like a, 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 a like a life shard. Mm -hmm. Okay. But again, these effects would only come into play when you draw it after you take- when you draw it as you take damage from the warding section. Okay. So the- the effects only take- take place only when you're taking damage? Mm-hmm. And you draw it specifically from the ward section. Okay, so elemental crystals make up the warding crystals, yes? Elemental shards, yes. Uh, yes, so shards, shards. Elemental shards. Okay. Okay. So I think we got the ketchup mechanic all sorted out, which is really cool. Now I think Also, it's... hi, Miles! Hello, Miles! Do you want to play? We're going to have open testing whenever we get stuff done, okay? <laughs> uh, let's see. What other gameplay things I write down here? Ah, I guess we could talk about card types, okay? Okay, cool. Let's do the elements first. We have... Light. <clears throat> Let's do the main. Fire. Water. Air. Air. Earth. Lightning. Light. Dark. 
I think that's enough. We don't want too many. And then we can add more as we go. What do you guys think of that? Five elements to start the off base, with? The basic five elements. And then we'll add more if, uh, if things get really nice, okay? Oh, oh, we can... Ancient Ark was talking about the playing phase. Yeah, yeah, so... Play... Phases... Oop, play... Phases. So, Ancient Ark said... Would the phases be sort of like draw card, main phase one, combat, main phase two, crystal shards, end? So, it would be... Draw a card. Okay. Card. And then, do we want... Should we place a unit restriction on how many units you can summon per turn? <clears throat> mm. I don't know. Uh, Gilmans, how do you feel about unit restrictions as far as placements? Like, should you only be able to place one unit per turn or not? Because let's say if, like, we have a necromancer hero, right? And they can place, like, skeleton tokens. And they, like, those skeleton tokens are, like, super cheap. So they place, like, 10 million skeleton tokens in one round. Cause that could be that could be like disastrous. Yeah, because then you can create a stall. Unless deck. unless you really nerf those skeleton tokens. Uh, Tyler said maybe one unit per turn unless they have an effect that allows one more than one unit to be brought out. I would say you can summon. Hmm. Because if... Hmm. I like the idea of a party size limit overall and one unit per turn deal. Oh! Oh! Something I remembered. Do we want to have something like a front line and a back line? Hmm. Does uh, I, I guess how does what games have a front line and back line and how does that handle Iron Blim Cipher? Okay. Um. So basically, you place your main lord in the front line, right? And they have two other cards that can go beside them. And then there's a uh, three units in the back line, right? And they can do support actions. The people in the and, uh, let's see. As long as there isn't a way to re refresh resources, then the resource system should keep things in, in, in check. Vanguard has, and back units can only boost. That's what I was kind of thinking, is that your, your rear guard can boost your frontliners. Well, what happens when your frontliners go? Do your rear guards, can they even attack? Your... Your rear guards are going to have to move up to the front. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like a forced march kind of thing. It's like a forced march, forced march mechanic. Where if all your front liners get wiped out, you move your back liners up front. Hmm. Oh, why says front pack too? Okay. So let's do. We also need to talk about units too. You could say it can be placed in either the front line or. So, do you want front line, back line? I do. I kind of do.
So basically, if unit card was placed in the back line, she could power up any unit in the front line with a buff. Yes, but if she was placed in the front line, she could just smack the shit out of people. Ah, okay. And, and this way you can have different units that do different ranges. Like, let's say, if you put me in front, right? I can only attack their, the, the front line, right? Right. But if you put unit in front, she can attack both the front line and the back line. Oh. But I'm weaker. Yes. <laughs> uh, like, as far as, like, less HP. Yes, and then... And then you can have units that can only, like, if they're put in the front line, they can only attack the back line, for instance. Like, archers, you don't... Like, archers, pretty much, right? Like, archers and fire emblem. What do you think of that? Okay. That is, that is a possibility, yes. Okay, so put down, uh... Rear guard units are used for support. Vanguard, wait... Would we be rear rear guard or vanguard, or are we going front line back line? You want front line or back line or rear guard vanguard? Wait, this, what? How does how does vanguard call everything? They they call it vanguard and like I don't know. Because I don't want to be like, hey, this sounds just like vanguard. And I think we'll have a six unit, six or eight unit, uh, limit on the playing field. You know, some like 50,000 billion skeletons. Okay, we'll say vanguard or rear guard position. Mm-hmm. Different units. So and like different units have different ranges when they're when put in the vanguard. Vanguard units are the only ones allowed to attack. So back can only buff. Back can only buff, or they can intercept attacks. Uh, yeah, they can buff, intercept, or, uh, <clears throat> redirect. There we go. Six is the most... Vote oh, six max. Okay, can you change buff and or intercept to buff, intercept, or redirect? Intercept, redirect. Mm hmm Yeah. Because so they would use, like, card seals for that. Hard skills. So some units okay, be yeah. yep. No, no, go ahead. So some units be very good as like rear guards. Well, usually your heroes are good as, as uh vanguards, right? <coughs> mm -hmm. Now, I guess the question is, what if you want to play uh a like a healer hero? What would intercept you intercept or redirect? Is so redirect would be like. You target Re another person. Reflect? You have to target another person. Yeah. And intercept. Yeah, intercept. Intercept would is be like you sacrificing stand yourself. Yes. 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 So I think. So let's say if you played a healer hero, and you would have to be placed in the vanguard, right? Because you you had to lead your army. I guess. Mm -hmm. We could have, like, different mechanics, so when they attack, they heal. Mm -hmm. They do healing damage. Um, I don't think we're gonna have 12 total units. I think 3 in the front and 3 in the back are good, or do you want to do 4 in the front and 4 in the back? Oh, and something something that Aeon Sigma just reminded me of is that if you have, like, a support unit as your vanguard, right? They would probably have the benefit of you don't necessarily need to have a rearguard unit to buff your uh, players. 
your yeah, other you just units. have all nothing but vanguards and attackers. <laughs> yeah, if you do that, yeah. Three three. Okay, I, I three like front, the three three. three. Rear. Yeah, three front, three rear. Or fourth front, three back. Hmm, what do you think? Oh wait, no. Hold on. Let's let's do a poll. We're doing lots of polls today, guys. We do three three first, and if three three oh yeah I forgot four we can do four or five. You mean four three? No, no, no like four. There, there's a lot of people going for three. So everyone's saying 3-3 three, three would be a good start. Like, 3 front, 3 back. Not including your Vanguard unit. Right? So then wouldn't it be 4-3 in that case? The I... Vanguard or your hero unit. I think your hero unit... Ooh, wait, 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 wait. I have no I idea. I would say they don't count towards the count. So... so... Okay. So, for your hero unit, do you want to be able to place it in the back or the front? Yeah. Okay. But wouldn't that make sense? Yeah. Like, because, like, if we had a, a hero unit that was, like, the... Yeah, like, I feel like you, you wouldn't want the hero to count towards that count. But you can specify where the hero can go. Like, the hero can only go maybe, you know, the vanguard, but they can't go rear guard, or maybe they can go, do both. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds... That sounds maybe, yeah, I also thought about maybe letting heroes switch between rear and vanguard, too. Depending on their class? Depending on their class, or just what abilities they have. Like, they can just swap freely. Like, oh yeah, this turn I want to be in the vanguard, this turn I want to be in the real rear guard. Mm hmm The hero is able to make their own attacks and die? Yeah, because, like, if you kill the other uh, person's hero, then, like, they can't level up their monsters. So the hero unit can be the center of the formation that counts as both or you have to choose from the start of the match? Question mark. Are they more? Are are they more just to use spells? That's a good question. I I still think the hero is definitely not going to count towards okay. the the card count. Yeah. Okay. And now we are selling the question of placement. Should we be able to have the hero be placed in the front and the rear guard? Front or, not and. What if you have the unit card? <laughs> I can fight front and back. Then what? <laughs> I thought only if you were placed in vanguard then you can attack. It's so like, I only ha I can only decide like oh do I want to start from the back or do I want to start from the front and I'm stuck there. I think that would make sense, yeah. Because okay, the thing that I foresee an issue is if you decide to play your unit in the back, you can just place a shit ton of shit in the front and stall people out. So you make the decision on where you're going to go. Yeah.
Or you just be able to swap the hero spot once per turn. So I guess, I guess the question is, when you place down your hero, do they have to stay in one spot? Are they stuck in the rear until all your vanguard gets wiped out and then they move to the front? Or can you, let's say one turn, I want to be in the vanguard because, you know, heck, and then next turn I'm going to be in the rear guard. Or maybe we have a unit that allows you to do that. I don't know. Zane does bring up a good point. That you can have that be a class feature. Is where they are able to flip-flop once per turn. For a class feature. Uh, they want you to doodle how the, the layout would look like. Okay. The card layout, like, uh, formations. Uh, you mean the, like, the play, play zone? Yes. Okay, so I, okay, I'm leaning towards... Include the crystal. I am leaning towards... Hi, nerd! At the beginning of the match... You decide if they are going to be up in the front or in the back. They're stuck there. Great. I'm going to let you talk. The bathroom calls for me. I'll be right back. Yuki, can you make the card, the, the drawing space, either bigger on the screen? Blow it up. I am. I blew it up, you bitch. Go, go, go to the bathroom. The number two in it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, is that you're going to start off either in the front or the back. You have to start, you have to decide to, at the beginning of the match, because I figure, you know, you would configure your deck to either be more defensive or offensive based upon your hero. So you should be able to determine if you want it or not. Sorry, I'm like busy uh making the uh the playmat, so hold on. Deck. Main deck goes here. Okay. Main deck. And then I think I may have to extend this out a bit. Word. Crystal. Uh, 
card. Wait, wait, wait. We need to copy main deck, duplicate group. Do shard play. Shard, they spent. All right, I'm back. Sorry. You know what, Yuki? Mm. I just realized mm. in our lore video, didn't mm. we specify what the crystals were called? Fuck, did we? We might have. Good luck. Let me look it up. <clears throat> also, guildmates, if you want to look at our lore video, uh, Yuki did all the art for it. That's our lore video. What are the guildmates saying? Okay, so we did uh, name the mo the the main crystals monocore crystals, but we can call them warning crystals. It's fine. Slight lore difference is not going to kill us. <laughs> I'm watching the the lore video again. It's so well done. Ugh. Grave yard. Yes, Yuki did all the art. Oh, hello, Blue. Hello, hello. See. Yes, Yuki did all the art. She did great. She was like slaving away. I, I felt so bad. Yeah, you fucker. Field. Card. What are people saying about the Vanguard movement? Oh shit, I wasn't even- I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> Unit. Van. Unit. Okay, so Hermit said- so maybe some heroes have a keyword that reads them to the <coughs> front or the back. Or some might have an ability to flip flop. I think that's good. So we're gonna make it. You either belong in the front or the back, and then 
So you have a special keyword to make you flip flop. So be it. And yes, do a leveling TCG. Ayo. Or maybe we have some non hero units that have the keywords that are locked in the ship enemy positions, allowing them to pull a hiding hero to the front or maybe take out a pesky buffer in the back. See? We're about to get over here! <laughs> yeah, see? That'd be fun. Will range play a factor in this card game? Who can Vanguards attack? What the Vanguards can attack depends on their attack range. If you place Yuna in the front lines, for example, if you place Yuna as a Vanguard card, right? Because uh, Rear cards are mainly supposed to... Buff, buff, and support. Yes. Uh, and as a mage, I'd be able to attack both the front and the back. Yes. But my health might be shit. <laughs> I'm a glass cannon. <clears throat> I like the idea of referring to the main deck as something else like inventory or barracks or something. Oh, oh yeah, the we barracks. Do we'll do barracks. Actually, uh, when I learned about man, is that man is very estimatic. Those who master it gain it seems to universal manipulation. Back when MTG called the deck a library because it was supposed to be where a planeswalker stored their spells. Oh. The ward crystals are the damage mechanic. Yes, so the ward crystals take damage. Like, if you kill everyone's vanguard, you can attack the ward crystals. If you kill everyone on the field, uh, you can attack the ward crystals. Okay, okay, okay. I have a question. So, to determine damage, there's two different ways that we can do it. Either you have to smack the shit out of the crystal after destroying everything, right? Mm -hmm. Or, do we want to count based upon units? Like, let's say I take out five units in the back, or five units in the front. You know, two in the front, two in the back, right? Mm -hmm. Would that count towards the Ward Crystal shattering? <clears throat> or are they going to have to smack it? Good question. The Vanguard can target backline if they have the range, yes. Yes. Kimberly, hello! Side deck equals mercenaries. <laughs> Hit the crystal X amount of times to win. Yeah. <coughs> so you have to wipe out everything. Would your hero count towards that? Or do you have to kill the hero, the hero unit? Mm, okay, so... You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying here? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So... So, doing damage. So, that's a good question. Um, how does Digimon handle... Because I know, I know some games, um, <clears throat> they allow you to still hit, hit like the life point area or the crystal area, even if you have monsters in the field. You can just like go ahead and attack. I like the idea of attacks on the ward with potential interference from field, field units. So decks need to have backline units to redirect attacks. So like, let's say someone can choose to attack the crystal, but the backline units, like if they're still left alive, they can just redirect the attacks to other people. You mean to themselves? To themselves or to like the vanguard instead. If they have a skill? Yeah. I kind of like the idea. 
But there's, okay, there's the issue of why you don't have enough rear guard units to do that. Actually, mm -hmm. actually, actually, actually. Because then we have the catch-up mechanic of if you damage the crystal, you get more crystals. Yep. Also, I do like the fact that rear guards can intercept attacks on the ward crystals. Or on character on vanguard units or whatever, or other units. Um, would vanguard units be able to defend against crystal attacks? Or would they not be able to because they are stuck in attack mode? That's a good question. They're stuck. Yeah, I would say they're stuck. Only uh, rear guards can uh, can defend the crystals. So rear guards are the only ones allowed to redirect attacks. That makes sense. Vanguard needs to be so far. Yes, you're right. You're right. Okay. Vanguard can defend by being a removal source. Okay, yeah, fair. Okay. Even damage to the crystal can damage at any time. Mm hmm But uh, rear guards can defend crystal. Mm hmm Or if you have any uh, other card types, like, do we want spell yeah. cards? Do we want tactics cards? I guess that's okay. something... By, by defending the crystal, is this an automatic thing done by rear guards, or is it, like, a special... Thing that only some rear guards can do. I think that any rear guard unit should be able to sacrifice themselves. That's fair. Regardless, only some. Data said. Only some, like if they have the keyword. <clears throat> Only some because you can make like healers who don't need to do that or something. Or defenders who can. This means you need to be able to consistently draw rear guards. That's true. That's the thing that I kind of want to avoid is like you have to have to have like shit ton of rear guards. Zeta said, try to make it so that way everyone can defend, but do it in different ways. So all of rear guard can defend. Mm hmm. But they do it in different ways. So, like, for example, one can deflect the damage back. Right? Mm hmm But they would lose. I feel like if you deflect, you can only have that ability once or something. Or negate. Right? I don't know. Should we have the ability to deflect damage back? Like, let's say someone attacks and you let them, but then you have a rear guard healer. And then you have a less, uh, like a tanky unit that just blocks. Make rear guards have a blocker skill. Two sets of abilities based on if they're a vanguard river. Yes, pretty much. 
I mean, I don't know. Will will all all uh, cards have a Vanguard rear guard? I, um, I'm assuming I, Vanguard cards are always locked to Vanguard position. They cannot be placed in rear guard. Is my guess. I'm I'm kind of under the opinion that unless they have a special skill that allows them to switch, the cards will more or less be locked to Vanguard or rear guard because we also have to think about card real estate on the actual card themselves. We don't want it to be so overflowed with text that you can't read shit. So I, because I'm going to be honest, most classes, right, tend to like one position or another. Am I wrong? Yeah. Like as a mage, you'll want to stay in the back. And we're still doing the one where like if the rear, if your vanguard gets wiped out, your rear gets shoved to the front or not. Or they just staying there. Hmm. I think they're just gonna stay there. Okay. So there's going to be no forced march mechanic, where you have to like put everyone in the front. Yeah, because then there's no point. I mean, you're already like you know, you're already it already sucks. You lost all your vanguard. <laughs> also, Brandon, hello. Glad you could stop by. Also, to be honest, right? If you had no fucking vanguard, wouldn't the people be able to attack anyways? Because there's no one in front. They can just attack the rear guard. Yeah, so there's no point in making them go move up to the front. You're right. You just can't attack them back. Yeah. Unless you move them to the front. But will rear guard have a so rear guard won't be able to attack back if va if the vanguard's wiped out. I think that would be the case. So you either leave them in the back or you're gonna have to move them up to fight. So are they gonna have also fighting mechanics too? So you can move them up. Um, they wouldn't have any. Okay, here's here's what I think. Right, if they have attack stats, right. That's what's going to be used if they're placed in the vanguard. <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. And to defend... I think to defend maybe should be based upon their attack stat, too. Like to... So it's just one stat. Defend against crystals. We don't want too many, too many, like, stats, right? We call it power. So defenders would have like a normal well, attack. Wouldn't, wouldn't that make me fucking broken? <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay, you're right. We do have to have defense stat. My bad. My bad. You we broken. Never mind. <laughs> Get that. Um. Okay. So we're gonna have attack and defense stat. And if your vanguard gets wiped out. As the rear guard, you have the option to either put your rear guard in the same spot, don't do anything, or you can move them up. You can rearrange your army. Also, put down what element they are. Range. So, like... <clears throat> units. Uh, so... So, if... If... All of Vanguard is wiped out. Mm -hmm. Rear guard 
can move forward or they can stay in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay, vanguards are always going to use their attack stat. Rear guards are always going to use their defense stat. Okay. Okay. So they'll make it easy. And, How do you and this way, if you really want to use that supporter as an attacker, feel free. Your attack's just gonna shit be shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay, we need to... How combat resolves. If you're attacking <coughs> a vanguard, obviously the attack has to be higher than the other person's attack. Because the idea is that you're engaging each other in a battle. Okay, so we'll do... Or, do you want to have HP? HP would like... be good. Or would that be too much? I don't know. What are your thoughts, guildmates? HP or no HP? Because it's either we compare by HP or we compare by your attack or defense stat. Oh, actually, shouldn't we compare it based upon defense if you're the one getting attacked? Now that I think about it, it doesn't make sense to compare attack with attack if they had defense. Mm. What do you think, Gildates? So if, if we do HP, though, like... It's like, they do 10 damage, and you have 90 HP left. Because then that would require tokens. <laughs> yeah, that would require tokens. So should we just make it fast, fast paced and be like, one and done? Like, as long as you're higher, you kill them. Yeah. Or should we make it like, tokens, slow game? Like, didn't Pokemon do that? Or, what? Damage tokens? Pokemon? Yeah. Where it's like, the Pokemon of HP, and you had to just chip them away. Hmm. I haven't had, uh, played TCGs in a while. I'm looking up stuff. So, her stone has the HP chip. I forgot, does Yu-Gi-Oh! is the HP chip or is it one and done? How about Digimon? How does that handle? Because Yu-Gi-Oh! does the one and done. Uh, 
Okay, so um, I think Digimon's one and done because I'm looking at the card, and it's like fourteen thousand DP. Digimon's one and done on a single power stat. That's right. See, see, I like chip, but I don't like, like dealing with tokens. <laughs> I, I I can I can see that. Let me let me do a poll. So I guess people said four front four rear said three front three rear. It was like really close. Four front three rear. Four front, four front, four rear. Won the poll instead. Three front, three rear. Okay. Should we do four then? Yeah, that's what I did. Look at the, look at the box. Okay. Okay, let me do the poll here. How to, to handle damage to units. One and done. Fire attack kill. Chip damage. Take damage. Mark. Token up. Use token. Balancing it is the challenge. Yeah, I agree. That, that is always hard. Also, Yuki, do we have background music play? Why? No, I'm just curious. No. Put on some music, Hope. Hmm? Put on some music. Put on some music, okay. It's really, it's really close battle. Yeah, personally, I like chip damage, but I hate dealing with tokens. It depends on if we're going to be mainly playing, like, physical or not, you know? Hi, Cory. This is easier, easier to do chip damage online, probably. I spilled Mountain Dew all over me. You like the music? Xeon did it! Really good. Oh, they're thinking one and done. Okay. Simpler. So whoever has the higher attack power? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's... Okay, okay. Um... Hmm. Do we do... If you're attacking a Vanguard unit, it's their attack power? In regard, is their defense power? Or should we just do... Attack versus defense for everything?
That's a good question. And what about if a vanguard attacks a rear guard? Would it be attack, attack, or attack versus attack? Attack, 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 attack. Hi, Rex. Or for Pedro. An old Napoleon Dynamite reference. Pick uh, one and done. said attack versus defense for everything. Versus defense. So, like, if you're a vanguard and you attack a vanguard, you're gonna have to compare attack versus defense. And then, if you attack a rear guard, it's attack versus defense for that too. But rear guards have the advantage of they can intercept or redirect and shit. So take out the only uses attack and only uses mm -hmm. defense. So like Yu-Gi-Oh. ways that we can do this. Vanguard, the Vanguard uh, unit has their own little deck and they pretty much level up every fucking turn. Right? So it's like ensure that you don't have to search for that Vanguard's promotion. Whereas I think the most... Talking about. Yeah, the hero unit. And then, for other games, I think you have to search for the promotion. Also, hi John! Hi Zeta! LOR does level up by making you complete some mini quest. <laughs> <laughs> That's kinda cool. What's LOR? Game. What's LOR? Like, what type of mini quest? Like, uh, can you give us examples? I mean, that would totally be on theme, but... Kill five peons. I know, like, uh, they'll make you sacrifice units. John, happy birthday. Sorry, belated, happy belated birthday. Happy birthday. Belated. What's retired? There's a difference between retired and graveyard. Yes. Cards. Retired is like your used cards, right? Graveyard are banished cards. You can never use them again. Like a duelist character has to kill two units to level up. Oh. I see, I see. Or like a mage unit would have to have five shards or some shit, right? 
Our spell slinger unit has to play eight cards, eight spell cards to level up. Okay, okay. Hmm. I don't know, what do you think? Just how many times are you gonna level up? Just like two. Two. Right? Because the max level is three. Yes. <clears throat> Someone asked what if you can just draw EXP cards. So there's two ways. Either we use the conditional level ups like that, or... We make it based upon the shard number, and you have to have the card in your hand. Right? Define shard number, like... You have to have three shards and sacrifice it? Yeah. Because you're, you're technically summoning that to the field, right? Like Yu-Gi-Oh. Or if you want or work item... towards it, or work towards it passively, like um, after X amount of turns. That's hard. Or you can have an item that makes you level up. I don't know. Let's have a poll. Passive, conditional, or sacrificial? No, so quest based, like, you know, objective based. So it's either objective based, mana cost based, or passive. Remember, your hero would be the main one leveling up, I think. Yeah, so you really only need to level up the main one. You could do both. Passive EXP game, you can level up fa faster during part of the quest. Oh, there is the issue of why do you suddenly get, like, too many level twos in your hand, you'll have a base unit. So in that case, wouldn't passive be better? Or maybe you would be smart enough not to put two, 10 million level two units. Like, it's on you to build your deck. <laughs> that is true. true. It's on you to build your deck on how you want to build it, right? Also, did we decide on summon limit at all? A summon limit? What do you mean? Like how many units you can place on the field at once? Yeah, we did. Four, One? four. No, 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 no. Oh. In one turn. I think we decide uh, one, right? I think... Yeah, one one card per turn. Pretty sure we did. Actually, we, we didn't write that. <laughs> Objective quest. So 
But considering that the ward crystal damage converts into shard placement, we can have the low up mechanic be conditional or you can pay. That way damage can let you level up your hero. That's fair. Because otherwise you don't have a way to really like if if <clears throat> if your condition to level up is like destroy three heroes, not not three heroes, three units, and you're losing, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way you'll level up. Mm -hmm. I do like Hermit's idea. So we'll do like the both route. Okay. The other poll going up. I like Hermit's idea. So, it, like Aeon said, it'd be fair for ketchup if things are going poorly. How many units can be placed on the field per turn? So, if you have enough mana to place it, you can place it. case for there being no limit to place, considering we have a mana system, as long as everything goes off of resources, there will always be a limit to what a player can do in a turn. True. Fair. Fair. No limit, then. Okay, no limit. Sounds good. So, like, what if we have a Necromancer class, right? Would they be able to activate their skill once per turn and only summon, like, one unit or whatever? For free? Based off of their discard? Retired? Uh, that would depend on the, the unit. Like, sure. we'd have to figure it out. Play test it. Necromancer, someone had an idea. Could it depend on how many died on the turn before? Oh, that'd be hilarious. That would depend on what's in your uh, retired. If we did a Necromancer unit, mm -hmm. that'd be interesting. That'd be cool. Hermit's right. Also... So why, when would something go into the graveyard? Would that be spells? Items? Okay. Graveyard <laughs> needs to discard from play, like completely. You can't search for it at all. I was thinking to prevent abuse of searcher items. Some cards must be put into the graveyard instead of retired. Or some units must be placed into graveyard instead of retired. Are there games that use a graveyard versus retired deck? 
you. I don't know, have two. I don't know you guys. Or... What do you think? What do you think? Should we just do retire? Which is like the Pokemon way where everything is, you know, just in, dumped gone. into discard. It's gone. But, you know, some cards actually do pull from the discard deck. So I guess that's another pull to do. Should we have two graveyards kind of thing? Because, like, let's say that I'm a healer. I can revive a character, right? I would pull it from the retired instead of graveyard. Graveyard means that you cannot <coughs> revive them. Oh, void's a, void's a good one. Instead of calling graveyard. So graveyard and then, uh, void. I'll rename that. That's a good, good, uh, name to waste there. The void. <laughs> Nephi, thank you. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Should we have basically two graveyards? One where you can get discards from, like, you know, for searchers and shit. And then another where you can't do shit with it. Like, you can't even search it. Yeah, we, we're curious and we want to know. Because I, I, I can I can understand where Seeker... Seeker would be really annoying. Because in Pokemon, right, I have the issue where people just throw great balls like no tomorrow and just search their fucking deck. Okay, let's not pull MTG or Yu-Gi-Oh and have cards in the void never come back. Hermit, do you care to explain why you think <clears throat> it's uh, not a good idea to have a void? Cards never come back. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see what Hermit's going to say, though, about void. I, I am now. If you do a Digimon did and uh, search with only look at top three or something to search. Yeah, the reason why I would want to do the void is if so you can't fucking abuse your healer's power or something, right? Because we're gonna have healers for like some sort of resing mechanic, right? Where you just keep resing from the graveyard every fucking turn. Like rezzing the strong monster back and forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the strong monster goes to die. Okay, I use my reds. <laughs> so, like, we can have some conditionals where, like, if this unit dies, it must go into the void. Yeah, so I, I wonder if Hermit is saying... Uh, they, they do not like it when you can never bring anything back, or they do like it when you can never bring anything back. Actually, but 93% are saying retired and void. Let me... I'm gonna hear what uh, Hermit has to say, though. Let me look up the Yu-Gi-Oh! Playmat and see what they do. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! had the graveyard which was supposed to be the end-all-be-all. Yeah, that's fair. 
then there was a lot of graveyard recursion. Then they added removed from play, but those start parts started to come back. So like Yu-Gi-Oh would do a lot of take back scenes where like, oh this card can only go to the void. Nah, it's okay, they can go to the graveyard. <laughs> and come back. That type of thing. I like both because we can leave it to the cards to decide how strong the effects are. Set limits on resin due to breakdown of Aether. Hmm. So now there was two graveyards. Oh, there is no final and this card is gone. <clears throat> I see. Yeah, in our game, if it gets sent to the void, you cannot res it or bring it back or anything. It is dead. It is in the black hole. <laughs> okay, so uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! had the issue of there was no void. There was just two graveyards <laughs> and you could pull from both of them. Okay. Yep, void is gonzo. Yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna uh that's what I kinda wanna do. Is that once a card has been rezzed once, you cannot res it again. Yeah, okay. So the two resources, yes, okay. So let's do um And we'll make this, make this document a lot neater. Yeah. Graveyard and void. Graveyard. Card sent here can be reused. Mm-hmm. Res. Void. Cards sent here cannot be put back into play ever. After that, they are sent the void. Rezzed once, right? Mm -hmm. So what, okay, Zasta asks, what about zombies and other weak cards uh, that are revived multiple times? <clears throat> I think if we made exceptions, it would be on the card. Yeah, on the card itself. Because if we did... Zombies or weak, like the weak little zombies, maybe they always go to the graveyard and they never go to the void. But any other card, it goes automatically to the void. Yeah, like it would have a, a like special we would skill. specify it. it would be yeah, a we skill. would specify it on the on the card itself. Kind of like say this said, where like it, it leaves you room to be able to elaborate. And, uh, what Zeta said, like, about, like, doomed, that's a good keyword for cards that do not go into the graveyard and automatically go, doomed. go into, the, I like that. into the void. How much draws? It's not gonna have much draw. <laughs> it's just for fun. We've always wanted to do this. This is not to make Can money. you make a <laughs> uh, list of keywords and put, like, doomed as one of them and, uh... Okay, 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 okay. okay. I will tie you this dock up, I promise. Eh, eh, key. That was the link to the lore video. Uh. Doomed. Boy. Doomed. Keywords. Vanguard. Rear guard. Oh, keywords on the cards, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a skill, like, you know. 
Oh, skill like, keywords? Yeah. Like, you know, so with on Vanguard action, and Vanguard, Rearguard be on there? Uh, no. I think you should be able to freely decide if you want your card to be Vanguard or Rearguard. Okay. It's just some are gonna obviously be better. Yeah. Be They're, better. Okay. Yeah, like, all, every single card is gonna obviously be better for Rearguard or Vanguard. It's not gonna say specifically. But if you really want to use that card to attack as a vanguard, go right ahead. Just gonna suck for you. Yeah. Okay, so doomed. When on on death goes to void, the death. void. Death or use. Mm -hmm. The thing we really need to discuss is how the expired food card will work in the TCG. Expired food, huh? You know what that would be? A fucking item card. You regain health every turn. But you incur a status effect each time. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this is not a game that we're making for profit. Heck no. Yeah, no. This is just for it's fun. Ju it's just for fun. We're gonna make it, like, into actual cars and stuff. <coughs> but not... It's not anything immediate. It's not like, oh my god, we're gonna be the next video. No, no, no. This is just for our... our amusement. Are there any other... Any other keywords? Oh, we need to sign card types. Define card types, like spells, traps. Yeah. yeah. Okay, are we gonna have spells, equipment? I think we should I have... <laughs> I think that we should have spells, equipment, and traps. You, you have activated my trap card. Yeah. So, do you, can you write down a section for spell or card types? Okay, so you have your hero card. Uh, there's also field cards, which can alter the, uh... You know, the play playing field on your side. Summoning sicknesses. There's summoning sicknesses. Summoning sickness, meaning if you summon it, it cannot attack. Yeah, so are there any going to be any summoning sickness units? Like, uh... Like, whoever goes first, is there summoning sickness? I think that we should have summoning sickness. Because, like, when you go out into the battlefield, are you immediately going to smack a person? No, you have to get ready. You have to prepare yourself. Tactics, I like tactics. Mm hmm Okay, summoning sickness. So, should summoning sickness only always be for first turn? Okay, summoning sickness should always be for first turn, as in you cannot attack, period. Haste would be for use that can attack immediately. Ooh, that's a good one, Ancient Arc. Okay, so. Oh, wait, gonna... ah, so many keywords. <laughs> Haste. Uh, okay. In player fit, uh, summoning sickness is always going to be for first turn for both players or just well, player one, because player two is always going to be a disadvantage. Okay. So they can't attack. Can you block uh, with summoning sickness? I think you could. You just can't attack. Uh, actually, people are saying both players should be affected with summoning sickness their first turn. Can you make a poll?
Also, I think summoning sickness works. You know why? We use portals to get around. And would summoning sickness be on every turn or just... You mean on every summon? On every yeah, unit on placement? Every... So you can't immediately attack? Yeah. I think it... Hmm, that's another thing to decide, right? Because some... Some games allow you... Allow you to attack. Dan says every summon. Keyword soup. Oh, hi, Frey. Okay, I'm gonna go back and, and try the key mess around with keywords again. So, Doom, Haste, Shifter, Shirter, Shifter, Shifter, Sniper, Martyr. And these are not set in stone until yeah. we get a chance to, like, I summon blue white. Blue knight, white mage. <laughs> Why not pink mage, blue knight? Word for can take ma or is it selfless that you can take damage for another unit in the same room? Because what about the crystal? Can't you can't take damage for the warden crystal? Yeah, I think selfless would selfless and barter would both be for the crystal too. <clears throat> so would we have units with haste, no summoning sickness? Mm-hmm. But that would definitely be, like, a high-cost card. Yes, that would have to be a really high-cost card. Or you have, like, no HP. Like a rogue, for example, right? Is there anything else that we need to decide? Okay, so... Every turn, you always draw one mana cr mana shard, right? Draw and mana one shard. shard. Yeah. One mana shard card and one Main. card from deck. Yeah, from the deck. Why are we calling the deck? The barracks. Can't be attacked until this card attacks. Okay, fair. But there could be like. We can always take out the keywords. Uh, I would say for cells, <coughs> that's a little bit too OP. Let's say, could you have like an item card that reveals someone in cells? Probably can. You didn't come up with counters for stealth. You need. Yeah, we can come. With I counters. imagine not. I imagine it's not like you can't have five stealthers. You know. Mm. 
My worry is that someone's gonna make that deck. Well, you know what you do. Weak at high attack, weak defense. <laughs> yeah, card loses attack uh, stealth after attacks. You know. Or ah. No, no, it can't be attacked until summon sickness is over. There we go. That's 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 how we circumvent it. What? This card cannot be attacked until summoning sickness is over for that card. So the initial the initial um, time that they are placed on the field, right? They cannot be attacked because normally, like let's say I already had a card that is recovered for summoning sickness, I could kill that. That stealth card before it could be unstealth, you know? <clears throat> so you want the stealth card to be placed face down until con until combat interaction? Untargetable. Yeah, it's untargetable. For one turn, immediately. But they cannot block or do anything else. And usually, during that one turn, that initial turn, right? Uh, instead of the, for the one turn, say the first, first turn of that card, so during the summoning sickness phase, right? So it's like assured that that unit will at least live to the attack phase, kind of thing. You see? So people can still attack people in summoning sickness. Yes. I mean that kind of makes sense. Yes. Can summoning sickness people block? We have summoning sickness. Oh yeah, we didn't finish that. Can they block? Hmm... Undecided. Huh? Undecided. Oh. Put that up in the poll. Also, Zeta said something about stealth. Is that AoE attacks will still hit the stealth player. So let's say you have a spell like Ice Storm. It would still fucking hit the, uh, stealth player. So that's one way to also, like, knock them out. Hit them. You want to say AoE spells hit them, not attacks. <clears throat> Is spell and tactics different? Yes. Because a tactic would be like two handed swing, a spell would be fireball. Right? Now, let's say I have the ability as my hero card to attack two units at once. Would I be able to hit the stealth player? Or would it have to be a spell? Or would they only have to have the AOE keyword tag in that attack? In order for it to hit? I think actually, they have to have the AOE keyword in the attack for it to hit the stealth player. Want block? That's a keyword. Mm -hmm. If you had 
say the name of the card that is being targeted, it can't hit itself. So, like, I, I assume, like, if your swing was not... If you can target two enemies, and there's multiple enemies on the field, it would not hit the stealth player. Like, what if it's just, like, one other person and the stealth person? Would that be able to hit them? Hmm. Probably not, actually. I think it, I think we'll, we're gonna go uh, Zeta's route, where they have to have the AoE keyword. Yeah, I would say AoE keyword. Where it's like, it just nukes everything. Uh, that's true. Isaiah says that's just two instances of targeting. That's true. Okay. Hermit said, I would say that blocking should be tied to a keyword. Okay. So, like, selfless and martyr, you know? So that we don't need block. Do we need so block? The, I, guess, I guess the question is, can summoning sickness people... If they have the ability to block something, should they be able to use their, their skills? Like, if they're a, a, a rear guard buffer. Because attackers can't attack. What about buffers? Also, it's 11.10. Yeah, we'll answer this question. So, I guess the question is... Should we allow blocking and skill use on summon sickness? I think wouldn't blocking and uh, blocking be tied to and skills be tied to keywords? Yeah. Okay, so then it should be. Okay, I I I, I will say that for now, um, it should it should be able to because if we limit it to blocking, it's not just an inherent card thing on every card, and it's tied to keywords. Then it should be fine. Because that means not every single card is going to be able to block. You have to have the right card. You're right. Yeah, so... You have a point. Because not every not every character can block anyways. Yeah, because not every rear guard unit is going to be able to block. Not every rear guard unit is going to be able to use the skill. So I think that you should be able to use the skill and... or whatever block... when you're initially summoned. How about the attackers? Can they also use their skills? When initially summoned? Like buff another person? Like I think the, was... I think they should be able to use their skill. Upon <coughs> some if rear guards can. If they have a buff. Well, okay, okay, how are we differentiating skill versus buff? Some skills are buffs. Okay? So, let me put it this way. Skills can either be buffs or blocks. Okay? Right? So, skills is basically just a broad way of saying effects on the card. So, the verdict... So what you're saying is, if they have a buff, it should still go. Mm -hmm. And they, they are summoned. Mm -hmm. 
Because let's say, what if I summon a debuffer? And they get killed before the debuff can go off? That would suck, wouldn't it? Then what's the use of summoning that unit if it's gonna die? That's true. Or would, you want to, you... or would you want to play some of the rear unit then? And hope to god they don't get targeted. You get what I'm saying? Just continuous effects versus one you have to declare. So on activation skills. Okay, so there should be several skill types. So yeah, I agree with Hermit. To circumvent the issue of can a summoning a summon sickness unit use their skills? It depends on the skill. If it's a continuous skill, yes. If it's an activate skill on you, activate, you had to obviously pay whatever cost or activate it. And it's one and done, you know. <coughs> so I guess can they use a continuous skill if they have summon sickness? That's the question. Oh yeah, that's right, White Fang. This is basically like the skill speed argument. Okay, we need some cards to get a feel of the tempo. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll put a, the question of can summon sickness units use their skills while summon... Oh yeah. And I'll highlight it. EX blocking. EX blocking. Because we know that they can't attack. We know that they can't right. attack already. Blocking or buffing. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Or whatever. Unless it. Word. Obviously, like for rogue ones that have stealth, obvious, we're going to let them stealth. Right? Yes. yes. Mainly, I think we should declare upon use. And I think active, we would have to put in the card description on your turn or another player's turn. So we have to dictate when they can activate it. You know what I mean? Spells and tactics will have different casting speeds. Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe that can be uh, what differentiates them. Because <laughs> right now, the, the only difference that you have is the theme. Yeah, I think the spell and tactics should have different casting speeds. Is that what direct different words? But how do we use keywords to uh, state those casting speeds? Is the question. Act 
action and reaction. Can you put that as a question in yellow for next time? Ah! Okay, how to different different terminology mm -hmm. for casting speeds. Spells versus tactics. So that's a question. Okay, so we had two questions that we're going to have to look into. And... Yeah, so we're going to... We're going to look into that next time because it's 1018 and we should probably end soon. Okay. As much fair. like to be to be honest, I would love for this to go on much more. Much, much more. But alas. We gotta end it. We gotta save it for next session. But this is super fun. I love this. But what do you guys think of the uh play playing layout that I made? Yeah, let us know what you think so far. Um, we'd be happy if you left any feedback too. Uh, you can leave it in the comments once this video, once the stream is done too. Um, I think I'm gonna leave a a section for like continuous traps or whatever. If I can find it. But do you need field card then? What's mm -hmm. the point of field card? Field card is like separate <coughs> because it affects your entire base. And it's gonna be constant until you swap it out. You know? It's basically to remind you, right? I, I feel like the field card is not needed, but go ahead. <laughs> what do you mean? I feel like we don't need a field card. But what if I want to change, like, the t the scenery to, like, Fiery Volcano? How would that benefit you? If I'm at the fire element, it would. See? Huh? Why would I fight at a volcano, though? <coughs> Are you guys... I guess that's something to put in as a question, is do we want field cards? That affect the entire playing field, or your space. Like a... You know what I, you know what I mean. Or could that roll into, like, a tactics or, like, something? A tactics or... Or spell card instead. Like, if I had, like, a... A spell of like area effect heal or something. I don't know, but you get what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. So field card's gonna be only one in the entire field, or can a uh, two at a time? You would. Because when you put field card into the playmat area, that means bo both can have field cards. Yes. Like, it would be like a... A type of enchantment that your crystal does. Because your crystal is basically creating a bubble for you, right? So you can attune that crystal to make it more advantageous to you, lore-wise? You, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Okay, we better end it here before we keep going, because we'll keep going all Yep. Night. Okay, so for now, this is going to be our layout. We're going to have a section in Discord that I'm going to make, uh, so we can track our progress and everything. Well, feel free, like I said, to leave suggestions in the video below. <laughs> yeah, feel free to leave suggestions in the video. Uh, I'm going to make a section in our Discord channel, uh, so you guys can keep track of development and suggest things. And give us current ideas and like. And this was super fun. You know, let's decide on another time to do this too. Yeah, we will. Uh, we'll figure out. We might swap things out. <laughs> mm. Okay.
Okay, go mates. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this was a really good first session. I, I can't believe... Honestly, time flew. Time freaking flew. And uh, we're so glad that you guys were able to contribute all your ideas and your opinions. Uh, because, like I said, we we don't know everything in regards to train card games. And there's so many out there that maybe one mechanic does not work well. And maybe we had the idea that it might. So having opinions for everyone else really helps us. So thank you so much to everyone who contributed today. Or to who, uh, you know, voiced yes, no, or voted in the polls. Okay, should we do quest complete? Yeah. Or see you next adventure? See you next adventure. See you next adventure. Um, do we have anyone to thank? I don't think so. Nope. Our next stream will be on tomorrow. It's a membership stream. Yeah, we're going to be watching the latest Gundam series. Oh, which I'll have to post a reminder. <laughs> uh, see ya! See ya! Thank you so much for the donation! Uh, if... We'll see you tomorrow wait, and then wait, Friday. Wait. Are we going to ready one? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking that up. And then we're also going to uh, have a collab stream on Friday at 10 p.m. EST with Frey and Abigail uh, playing. We need to go deeper. Let me look up who to raid. Please type the raid message and then we're going to say our. You know, let me look up here. Trade free. Good. Okay, that I typed the guild message. missed it but we got good headway yeah we did we did we did um we'll have a discord area you can talk and then if you have any comments you can also place it on the vod um and if you guys know anyone else who likes tcgs uh that might be able to, that might like uh giving input or even uh who might like our our streams feel free to introduce them to to us and and uh, link them this video Guildmates, it was so fun today. Thank you so yes. much. Hey, are you ready, Yuki? Yep. Three, two, one. See you, you next, next adventure. adventure. Bye, bye Guildmates.